going to show you the knee MRI that we used in the MSK Radiology Olympics. The case is available in the description down below, so you can go through the actual case. And if you're a radiologist, you can also try to report the case on your own. You can use your phone to stop your time and then you can compare your report and also your time with the competitors that actually won the prize. So before we start, I want to ask you, what do you think? How long did the winning radiologist need to report the knee MRI case in the MSK Olympics? Take a guess and I'm pretty sure you will be wrong and I'll show you the exact time later in this video. But let's dive into the case here first. I will first show the solution, how I go through the case. Then I will show you the criteria that we use to assess the case. And ultimately we will go over the time and you will be surprised how fast the fastest radiologist actually reported this case. So let's dive right in. So here we have the case of the clinical information. Also, you can see it's just knee pain. There was no mentioning of a trauma. So let's go through the case. First, we can start on the medial side and immediately we can see there's something wrong. We have a tear that's here in the undersurface of the posterior horn. Uh, then also some signal changes here on this medial side. Uh, we can also see the root doesn't look very nice. We go anteriorly. We can also see there's some changes here, maybe some blunting and then the anterior horn is fine. But we want to verify this always on a second plane. We don't want to just rely on one single plane. And we go here. And then we can see it's not just a horizontal tear. It actually has a vertical component. So this is a complex tear. And this was one of the criteria, And this is where some of the people actually failed or got disqualified because they just called it a horizontal tear. But this is more than a horizontal tear. Now this is an additional flap. This is a horizontal tear. This is a vertical tear. So by definition, it's a complex tear. And this can happen if you just watch or report the case on a coronal image. So you can just see horizontal tear, bam, finished. But actually it's more than that. And I can show you this on the axial here. You can see this is the additional component here. This is the other tear. This is kind of like a flap that's going in. This is the vertical component. And then here, this is where the horizontal tear goes into the under surface. So complex medial meniscal tear. Then in terms of cartilage, um, you know, the cartilage here looks quite okay. There is some mild bone marrow edema here. We've got some irritation of the meniscal capsular junction or the attachment of the capsule and meniscal capsular ligaments. Also a little bit of edema along the MCL, which is just the irritation of these structures from this complex meniscal tear. Uh, there's no bone marrow edema on the femoral side. And if you looked carefully enough, you can see that the anterior root here shows a anomalous insertion into the ACL. So we have this additional band. So this is the anterior root, but you can see there is an additional string of tissue here that first of all, one goes down here and the other one seems to go into the ACL. So we have a connection here that runs into the ACL. And this is a variant that's called anomalous insertion of the medial meniscus into the ACL. So AIMM into ACL, that's an anatomic variant. It's not so rare. We will see that occasionally. It's maybe not so clinically relevant, but uh, nevertheless, we don't see a proper transverse ligament here. Not that that's important. This little dot here, I don't know what this is. Maybe it's a little ossicle or like a piece of a meniscus, although it's a bit unusual to be that round. Let's see if we can see it on the coronal here. Maybe just some little ossicle here. Um, yes, so let's go back here. Then we see a large Baker cyst. We see some leakage or perifocal edema here. We've got some focal edema in the medial gastrocnemius head as well. So a little myofascial strain of the muscle here. And the pes enterine tendons otherwise are okay. So this is for the medial side. Then we go to the lateral side. And on the lateral side, we can see that the meniscus has this signal change here which seems to reach the undersurface, but I can show you later the surgical images. This was interoperatively not a tear or the tear was not visible. I would still count this as a horizontal tear, but intraoperatively it was not seen. And we can see a little bit of blurriness here of the tip. So there was some fraying of the free edge. And then the other thing that you could potentially see is in the posterior horn here, there's some horizontal or vertical rather change here, but this was not a tear. Also interoperatively, this has not been confirmed. This was more like a little fold of the meniscus here in the position and no tear detected at the posterior root horn junction. Then as for the cartilage, I think there was a little cartilage defect here, superficial cartilage defect, femoral condyle here, you can see there. 
and the tibial cartilage so far is okay, no bone marrow edema. A little bit of tendinosis of popliteus tendon, uh, lateral collateral ligament is okay. We have a quite a prominent popliteal fibular ligament here. We can see it quite nicely. It's a very a long one here. That's uh, just, again, an anatomic variant, not really clinically important. Proximal tibial fibular joint is okay. The iliotibial band is okay. And that's all on the lateral side. So moving on centrally, the ACL is continuous. We don't really see any major pathology here. It's certainly not torn. Uh, patient was how old? Like, not very old, um, but I didn't really uh, say much because we also don't have the history of trauma. I wouldn't make an injury out of it here. And for PCL, we see PCL is also fine. So, and then this is really everything here in the central compartment. Now we move on to the patellofemoral compartment. And here we see, um, what did we see? I think there's, yeah, a little bit of edema on the cartilage, maybe some very superficial fraying here. Re otherwise, I think the patellar cartilage is okay. Then we see the cartilage in the trochlear femoris is okay. Tiny bit of a fusion here in the suprapatellar recess. Extensor tendons are okay and hofa fat bed looks unremarkable as well. So the last thing we then can check is the aberrant course of the anterior tibial artery with a high origin from the popliteal tendon and the aberrant course between popliteus muscle here, down here. So this has only been detected by a few. So here you can see the criteria the judges used and I used to qualify all the reports. And the major finding that I wanted to be in the report, otherwise it got disqualified, was the complex medial meniscal tear. I know any part of raising of that would be okay. Uh, a description of two components of a tear would be okay. But if people just wrote horizontal tear, they were disqualified. So it needs to be a complex medial meniscal tear. And every report that had this then got allocated points for describing minor findings, AIM into ACL. I think nobody described that, which in a speed treating competition kind of like makes sense. Um, there was some parameniscal ganglicis, I think posteriorly, which I didn't even show you. Um, I think here there's some parameniscal cysts here from the posterior meniscus, most likely going into the posterior joint capsule. Um, so we can you can see them also here. So that's another finding. Then the Baker cyst we mentioned, myofascial edema of the medial gastrocnemius muscle or strain, posterior medial joint capsule irritation. So this was this uh, very intense edema at the posterior medial joint capsule here, very typical with meniscal tears. Then the aberrant anterior tibial artery variant got an extra point. The lateral horizontal tear of the meniscus gave an extra point. I think this is still consistent with a tear, even if in arthroscopy it was not seen. Initially I had this as a, I wanted to use this as a major criteria, but then the surgical report didn't show a tear, so I moved it back into the lateral horizontal, uh, into the manner of this uh, category. Then there was some mild or lower cartilage lesions of no clinical significance. So if somebody described some cartilage defects, either this one or at the patella, they got an extra point. So let's have a look at the results. Here are the results and you can see the table was collecting all these answers. This was the original table here. We then used a translation to actually translate these, you can see with a formal detect language translated into English. And then for the knee, we had two judges, Carlos and Leo, who assessed these reports during the competition to assess at least the knee winner that we presented in the stream. But then I went over all of these reports myself and I gave my additional analysis, which is a combination of me reading the translation, if it's not in English or in German, using also Gemini and also having an additional AI analysis of all the reports against these set a set of criteria. So I want to show you briefly how this works. So we have the reports here. We can go and pick any of these reports. I just scroll down so you can see all the submissions were submitted here. Some even in like languages, I didn't even know what it was about translations nowadays. This is the beauty of it. So anyways, so let's go to this first report here uh, or just take this one here. Guista de Baker, Probabento Rotto, Rupture Baker says. So we copy this report, the original one in the original language. We go to Gemini and I have set this or I programmed this beforehand, obviously after rigorous testing. And you can see I told the AI to be a judge in a radiology competition. I gave it the rules. I gave it the criteria, the assessment and the output. I allowed for language flexibility. 
and the output is either qualified or disqualified. If qualified, it would allocate points based on minor findings. So we copy in this short report here and we can see what it comes up with. You can also see I have the resources here with the original report in German, in English, and also the set of criteria, and you can see it is qualified, and we can check here. This first report with the Baker cyst is uh, disqualified here, so I haven't even wrote it in here, disqualified, because that was so obvious uh, without analysis. Now let's go to the winning report, so we can see. This was in Spanish, I would assume, or something, and we copy this, we go to the Gemini, we just enter this here, and let's see what Gemini comes up with for this winning report here. So it's analyzing the report and I will show you the time of this report later and I think you will be quite surprised. So very large report, so the you know you can see the thinking of Gemini, what is going over here. And there's some discrepancies in terms of ACL descriptions between the May my report and this submitted report. And this is okay because it was not part of the criteria here in terms of ACL injury. So if somebody says like a sprain or degeneration of ACL, I just let it go. Um, important was to qualify was this one here and then just positive finding. So if we would take it to the next level and this is maybe for the next year or next season, we will also set negative criteria. Like if you describe something that's there, but it's not there, then you get also disqualified. I did that actually in the shoulder and but it was a bit like a different setup. So you can see the report qualified with three minor points. So out of this list, the winning report got three findings. So what do you think? How quickly was the first MRI report submitted? So let's have a look. So here's the result. And you can see we started the contest at nearly 12 minutes past seven. Uh, this is my time in Abu Dhabi. And we got the first report. This was just a, a test. The first report after uh, just one minute and 19 seconds, but this was the rupture Baker cyst, so it was disqualified. And the first qualifying report was already the second report describing the complex tear and three minor findings in one minute 45 seconds. So congratulations, this is a super fast result. And in one of the next videos, we will talk to this winner of the knee round and learn about how he was able to achieve such a great time. And you can see the next three reports were all disqualified for 2 minute, 2 minute 15, 2 minute 21, and then we got 2 minute 30, the next major uh, finding correct report in 2 minute 30, this is rank number 2, then we've got one disqualified, then we have one in 2 minute 49, which technically, uh, based on the German report, it was correct, but Google Gemini translated it wrongly, so I overrided Google Gemini's analysis and actually gave the report as qualified in 2 minutes 49, great time. Then another one here, 2 minutes 58 seconds, another one, 3 minutes 36. I did an analysis of the times in qualifying and disqualified reports, and you can see this is on the y axis. We have the minute bracket, so all reports that are submitted after 1 minute, after 2 minutes, after 3 minutes. So this spans the 2 minutes to 2 minutes 59 seconds. And you can see the blue reports are the disqualified reports and the green one are the qualifying reports. And we can see many reports were submitted between two minutes and six minutes or seven minutes. So this is a kind of like the majority of reports coming in here. And around the five minute mark, this is where most people then got it right. So there seems to be a little bit of a correlation between speed and accuracy. Interesting that, you know, obviously, the two minute reports, more, most of them were wrong, but then most reports were better here. But you can see seven minutes, more reports were wrong here. We got many wrong reports at 12, 13 and 14 minutes. Well, this is always one case. And so there's no clear linear relationship. And this is what I talk about in my book, Speed MSK Radiology. It's about finding your own golden box, which is a very personal thing. And we will learn more from the winners how they were able to achieve these correct reports within just two, one or like nearly two to five minutes. And in the knee MRI masterclass, I teach people how to report below five minutes. And you can see this is achievable, it's feasible. And this was not an easy case by any means. 
uh, it's a case that's important because it has a surgical consequence and as you saw they actually went on to arthroscopy confirming the findings that we used to classify the report. So congratulations to the winner of the knee MRI segment of the MSK Olympics 2025 in just 1 minute 45 seconds. That's an incredibly fast accurate report so congrats and now the next video will be about the shoulder MRI 